Welcome back to the Art of the Paint podcast. I'm a very special guest, a little bit of family business here today. Yeah. My god sister, Ashley Bruner, former Gamecock. First off, Ashley, how are you feeling? South Carolina, the national champions. I'm like so proud. Like anytime I see like a tweet or something, I'm like, I'm going to milk this for at least the next full year, at least the next full year, at least until the next final four. And hopefully we're in that final four, but I'm going to milk it forever. Like I, I was at practice the other day and I was like, before we get started, we're national champions. <laughs> Before we get started with practice, just so everybody knows, <laughs> South Carolina won. Everybody knows that, okay? I love it. You, you, mentioned, you mentioned when you see a tweet, you're milking it. I saw you yeah. going back and forth with Iowa fans, like nonstop. So take me into, I, I, I kind of, you know, generally just your feelings on Aaliyah Boston and like the player right. that she is. And then take me into a little bit of Twitter beef that you were getting into with the Iowa, Iowa fans. I mean, Aaliyah, she, she is the best. She's the best that we've seen in a long time. She's probably top two at the University of South Carolina um, ever. Um, and she's a great person. That's something that we don't see a lot. And that's something that we really need to, people really need to take an eye to because she doesn't go and talk and talk to the press and that after, you know, after great, after game press conferences, she's not saying, oh, well, you know, Nothing like that. She's very, very humble. She's a very, very humble. So, um, you know, I watched the games uh, at two o'clock in the morning over here, watching the games. Um, and I tweet, uh, there's nobody putting up the numbers Aaliyah Boston is. In, in parentheses, because people didn't, weren't understanding this. I should have said in the sweet 16. <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> people went crazy people went crazy i had a bunch of yellow birds in <laughs> my the mentions. Yellow birds. <laughs> they're like they're like wrong do your research and i'm like first of all is iowa playing in the sweet 16 nothing against caitlin clark nothing against um her post player nothing against any of them but we're talking about the sweet 16 they're not in the sweet 16 they got beat that's fair that's fair I, i'm talking about the games tonight <laughs> and the games tomorrow night nobody's gonna put up what was it 23 and, and 20 it was nuts she was putting up the number she was putting up it was, it was no it was like tw- it was like 26 and 20 21 or something it, it was somewhere like, around there yeah it was crazy bizarre just bizarre numbers and people were going crazy like I had some a writer he was like putting Caitlin Clark's um I think his name's Kyle because he came up on my page so many times now <laughs> but his, he he put, put assists and and um, points and field goals or something. I'm like, first of all, she should have more assists. Aaliyah's and Boston's assist is over 200. Let's talk about that as a post player, as a five. And she's over 200 assists. And you're sending me Caitlin Clarks who has the ball in her hands, 97.8% of the game. That's fair. That's and you're fair. trying to compare, you're trying to compare the two. Yeah. And let's look, don't get me started on competition. Don't get me started on competition because the lowest competition we played was uh, Alabama. Sorry, Alabama. I love you. Man, man. <laughs> but that's the worst competition that we played right. all season. And you're having, you know, you have something to say. Oh, well, Caitlin Clark. I love Caitlin Clark. I think that what she's doing for girls basketball, women's basketball is amazing. But yeah. um, we're, we're talking about efficiency. Yeah. And I think the, de- the defensive end also has been overlooked, like, because Aaliyah Boston was... Overlooked by whom? Yeah. Well, by the people that were saying Caitlin Clark. Right, right, exactly. Right, Because, right. exactly. I, I mean, the only player to win National Player of the Year and National Defensive Player of the Year. And, I mean... It's, it's, what's her it's, name? It's, it's Aaliyah Boston. Aaliyah Boston. Aaliyah, Aaliyah Boston. <laughs> Aaliyah. Exactly. I'm, yeah. glad, I'm glad, you know, I'm glad you've done your research because they probably would have been like, oh, it's <laughs> happened before. Caitlin Clark should have got this <laughs> player, you know, and that's the type of fans that you want to have. You know what I mean? You right. don't have the type of fans that are just going to go all out like that oh, right better than Michael Jordan. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Say whatever you have to say for your, t- for your player to feel like, oh, she's the absolute best and I'm going to ride or die for her. But that's how I feel about Leah Boston. Yeah. And I think, right. I think the word they were using was transcendent. Was, was the word that was for saying that Caitlin Clark and that I think the, I forget, I think it was the same tweet you were talking about and I mentioned it on the last episode of Are the Paint where it's like 
they say that Aaliyah Boston comes around often. Yeah. And I was like, where are the other Aaliyah Bostons at? Like, where, like, please point me to them because. Even if you try to compare her to Courtney Paris, and you yeah. know, we're from Oklahoma, yeah. so we are yeah. Courtney Paris, Ashley Paris, Fiends. Yeah. Fans. Yeah. That's the what biggest. got me started on this was, was right. the Paris Twins. On, at every home game. Yeah. Every Big 12 game. So I'm watching her and they're like, oh, well, she has a hundred and something uh, in, in, in a row double doubles yeah but she wasn't popping out to the three and shooting jump mm-hmm. shots she wasn't defending guards on the perimeter on the switch so it's the the comparison that we can make is yes Courtney Paris was ridiculously dominant in her time but Aaliyah is like Courtney Paris 2.0 mm-hmm. because she's stepping out to the perimeter she's shooting the three ball she's putting the ball on the floor getting you know and ones right. off the dribble off the bounce and defending the guard so there's right. not, I, when was the last to be Aaliyah Boston that we saw? What's the best comparison? I mean, I, don't, I, don't, I honestly like the, the Paris comparison, but you, you yeah. said yourself just the element of being able to pop out. Like, yeah. it's just another layer to, it's like adding another yeah. layer to Courtney Paris that, exactly. and I mean, that's kind of just how basketball has evolved, you know, kind mm-hmm. of just as a whole too. But, right. but so you, you kind of mentioned off the court, like how impressed you were with Aaliyah. What, if you were to take like one skill, from Aaliyah and be like that that is what's most impressed me on the court what what do you think it would be hmm skill one just one skill yeah just just the the biggest part of her game that that when you watch her it just never never doesn't amaze you there's a lot I know. Like I want to say, I want to say her composure because she's she's never rattled. Like right. no matter what happens, she's never rattled. Um, really, her dominance is ridiculous. Like you're mm-hmm. seeing three and four players trying to double her, and she's just boom, boom, step through, lay up in the middle. I'm mean, just like, okay, I know they're probably playing the hardest defense of their lives, like the hardest, the best that they've ever played, but she's just literally dropping this shoulder, stepping through and finishing in between. So mm-hmm. I probably just say she's ridiculously dominant. She, it doesn't matter who, who's guarding her big post, little post. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. So Dom- now kind of, kind of just like expanding a little bit, just like South Carolina as a whole, what do you feel like, obviously it's a little bit different being a player versus now being a spectator and being kind of not the outside mm-hmm. of the program, but a, obviously a different point of view. What do you feel like from what you've seen, in recent years is the biggest difference in the South Carolina program from when you were playing versus this year? Um, 10 All-Americans. <laughs> uh, that'll do it. <laughs> that, that'll, that'll do, do it. it. That'll do it. <laughs> That's probably, I mean, to be honest, the biggest difference, like we were skilled. We had, you know, undersized post players that would go and get crazy rebounds. Uh, uh, Elisa Welch, she She's the the Victoria Saxon before Victoria Saxon, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know. So we we had the pieces. But they just weren't the the all Americans. We didn't have ten. We didn't have. I don't. I don't think we had one. I don't think we had any. Mm-hmm. Maybe Tiffany Mitchell. I, um, uh, that might be uh, reaching, but um, she might have been one. Mm-hmm. But that's the biggest difference. Everything <laughs> else is the same. Coach Daly's the same. Her, you know, discipline the same. Mindset's the same. She hates losing. You got to hate losing more than you like to win. That's all the same. It's just the personnel is Mm -hmm. amazing. Right. So you you mentioned Coach Staley there and kind of like her mindset and everything. So kind of talk to me about the relationship that you two have together and like the influence that Coach Staley has had on you. Oh, man, don't get me started. Um, just, Just her as a person, like her being so personable with her players, like to where we can go and talk to her. Yes, obviously, we were terrified of her just because we didn't want to mess up. We didn't want to, we didn't want to be bad, or, you know, whatever. But just her being personable to the people that look up to her. So now, like, when I'm coaching in the States, I want to be, you know, that person that my kids can come to and have any any range of conversation with and be comfortable coming to tell me, hey, so this happened today. I'm not feeling great. Like, oh, my mental is, is not where it should be today. Can I, you know, do a little less today or sit out today? You know, and they're comfortable coming to me and telling me this because I've made them aware that I'm a human first. Like I'm a woman, I'm a human. I've been you, I've been where you are. I've, I've been where you tried to go. Um, and that was kind of what Coach Shaley's like whole persona is 
hey, I've done this. Everything I've tried to do, I've done it. And I'm still a person. I'm still a human. I'm still a woman. I can still talk to you normal. I'm not snooty. I'm not stuck up. Um, and that's probably the biggest thing that she really rubbed off on a lot of us because anytime I see any, any of the players now, it's not like, oh, you know, why is she here? She, she's old or anything like that. That's very <laughs> like, kumbaya, like come back to the family. Like we, we love, love seeing you around. Um, and I would say that's the biggest thing that she is like a big extended family with mm-hmm. her and her players. Mm-hmm. And do you think that, I, I mean, even directly just like with your coaching stuff, like I remember like you tweeting out your first game, you wore a fit to mm-hmm. honor, to honor coach mm-hmm. Daly. Do you feel like, did you take anything? Obviously you, you took kind of like the family aspect of it. Did you take X's and O's from, from, from coach Daly as well to, to put into your to, own coaching? To be honest, I would like me to go and sit in practice to even remember. And I know for a fact, none of the plays are the same. Yeah. I know for a fact, none of the plays are the same, but you also have to look at my players versus her players right gotta keep right. it simple for my 15 yeah, 16, yeah, yeah. 17 year olds yeah for sure um but just trying to teach them the game and trying to get them to watch more basketball because that, i remember that was one thing that she said she was like these people don't watch basketball and again mm-hmm. growing up in oklahoma where we had the big 12 we mm-hmm. had you know dallas we had houston we had all those teams over there that we could watch and eventually okc obviously mm-hmm. um it was all basketball. That's all we did was watch basketball. It didn't yeah. matter what time of the year it was. We we're watching basketball. Like, mm-hmm. is there a basketball game on? And that's all we did. So I try to kind of push that onto my players. Like, oh, USC's playing Florida. Oh, you know, um, Vandy's playing Mississippi State or whatever. Just any game that's on, go and mm-hmm. watch it. Go and watch it. And then they would start, you know, texting me. Oh, well, did you see such and such on the back door? She got beat <laughs> on the back door. She looked like me in practice. And I'm like, this is good. <laughs> This means you guys are like paying attention. You're right. not just watch to watch. You're right. paying attention to what I'm sending you. So, <sighs> yeah, I think that's I think <laughs> I think that's actually pretty interesting because like I've heard like in like different interviews with like even like five star players like coming out of high school going to like the UConns and South Carolina like, stuff like that, and like they don't watch the WNBA. Yeah. They don't. They don't watch like you, they, you tell them like to name their favorite WNBA player, and yeah. they don't have one. And that's kind of been a topic I've seen on Twitter recently where it's like, well, how do we get these kids to watch these games and, and to be able yeah. to learn? And I, I think that's really interesting. I think it has to start with them watching NCAA first. Oh, that's it. Okay. Because that was my thing. Because if you have a favorite NCAA player mm-hmm. and she's going to the league, you're going to mm-hmm. watch her. That's you're going to want to watch her in the WBA. Right. You're going to want to watch her see, oh, well, is she, is she going to get rookie of the year? Is she going to do well? Is she going to play well? And that's where it's going to start and it's going to grow from there. And it's going to be like, oh, I remember her at Nebraska. Mm-hmm. Let me watch her game. Or, oh, I remember play, her playing OU or whatever, you know, right. college is close to you. I remember, like, it, my example is Angel McCautry. Okay. Because I'm pretty sure it was like 2008, 2009. Mm-hmm. OU and Louisville played. Mm-hmm. They were in the Final Four. And Angel McCautry, I remember they had like a little, you know, special or whatever on her. And I was like, huh. So of course I'm, I'm going to want to follow her into the next steps of her career. Mm-hmm. And I still follow her to this day because just because of that one moment from her little segment on ESPN. Mm-hmm. And so that's what I really try to tell my girls. Like, you don't never know who you're going to see that might resemble you or you might eventually want to follow. And she's the type of person that you like to look up to and blah, 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 blah. And eventually you might get to meet her, you know, right. stuff like that. Simple, simple things to me. Right. Like right. That. So just kind of more, more generally now, since you've gotten into coaching, what do you feel like has been the most rewarding part of being able to, to get into that side of the game? Relationships, really. Like, again, when my kids come to me and talk to me about random stuff, they do this all the time. Like, well, they'll text me at nine o'clock at night and talk about their socks. <laughs> and I'm just like I'm so glad that you love me enough to talk to me at 9 p.m about your sex but I'm going to bed but like, you know like little stuff little stuff like that that carry into like bigger relationships mm-hmm. you know like where they can come and talk to me and maybe I'll give them like little pieces of advice like I'm not going to bore you to death with my like my what I would do and what you shouldn't mm-hmm. do and no but I'm going to give you pieces of things that I've been through and that I've dealt with and how I handled it um, but I would say that's the best part. Like they're like my kids and I, and all my assistant coaches say that like, they're really like our kids. Mm-hmm. And I would say that's the best part besides teaching the game the right way. Mm-hmm. 
because some of these people are like oh yeah shoot the three ball from half court <laughs> and you can't make a free throw can't make a layup but you're gonna shoot the ball from you know mm-hmm. but besides from teaching basketball the right way this the best part of it is having these relationships with these young girls that are going to look up to you forever they have looked up to you since forever that's probably definitely the best definitely the best feeling right so now we went we talked about the coaching side i want to talk about the player side now because you just oh, came out of retirement you're in yeah. france right now playing yeah how how did this happen what went into the decision kind of give me give me the timeline on this Oh man. So basically, um, well, high school basketball starts September ish, you know, like working out practices, blah, blah, blah. Um, it doesn't end till mid March, I would say just swinging it mid March. Um, but my old team who that's, that was the COVID year two years ago was the COVID year. And everybody was like, Oh, we didn't get to finish our season. Basically. We went home in March. The season ended in May. So we left super early. Um, didn't really get my, you know, my closure, I guess you could say, um, with that situation. So, and then I got hurt that summer. And I was like, nah, you know, maybe this is what I was supposed to be. I tore my Achilles. So I was like, okay, maybe this is what it's supposed to be. So, you know, the next full year, I'm like working on my, you know, getting back in shape, um, trying to, you know, trying to play basketball a little bit here and there. Um, and then I got the head coaching job. So I was like, okay, I guess I'm really here for good. I'm home for good. Um, go through that whole, go through this whole season. Halfway through the season, my old coach, my old assistant coach, who is now the head coach of my old team, Landon, is like, oh, Ash, please come. We need you. It's <laughs> December. When did I say that high school basketball ended? Yep. March. March. Okay. Yep. So I'm like, I can't leave now. Like I have a whole half a season to play with my girls. Like there's no way that I can leave now. No way I can leave. So we're getting to, you know, February, March, and we're in second round of playoffs. And I know for sure it was a Friday. So we just played and I'm getting texts like on WhatsApp from my agent. Oh, they need you. They want to know when you can come, if you can come. I'm like, we're in playoffs right now. We just won second round of playoffs what do you guys can we can we wait to talk about this until we went state like mm-hmm. that was all that was all I was worried about when is mm-hmm. state um and then the next game the Wednesday it was the next Wednesday we lost in the third round of state and I was just like a third round of playoffs and I was like shoot mm-hmm. <laughs> I was not expecting to be done I still was expecting to be playing basketball for another almost two weeks mm-hmm. and so my agent was like well how did it go did you win like and I was like you know no <laughs> you're gonna no, make me admit it like... asking so nicely you know like you could have been nicer about it um but then they it really happened in like two days they're like okay are you ready to come and again I've been working out I lost like 30 pounds from my first Achilles tear so mm-hmm. I'm like okay you know I'm feeling it a little bit let me like look into it and then literally the next day they're trying to send me paperwork and stuff and wow. contracts and yeah so it happened really really fast so I was in the gym like literally that whole week and I was like okay I feel good you know but I haven't like played played like I played Mm -hmm. with my players but I haven't like played like bang you know like somebody's really trying to beat you up in the game Mm -hmm. so I mean it it happened really fast like I knew he was interested but it's also like it's the end of the season over there like do they really need they don't need they'll they'll be fine you know, and then he messaged me literally uh, like four days before we lost in the, in the third round of playoffs. So I was like, well, I need, I needed a break to be completely honest. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I'll, I'll go. I need a break from this. Like, you know, you know, losing as a coach, they say losing as a coach is worse than losing as a player. And I somewhat agree. I, I, I agree. It's really it, because you have to see your kids in that state Mm -hmm. and they're sad and crying and I'm having to see these 15 16 17 year old kids like crying Mm -hmm. and I'm like all I can say is this summer we need to do a b c d Mm -hmm. I don't even care about the game's over this summer we need to do all of this so we don't have we're not in the same spot next year right and you guys would think oh it's a year away it's gonna go by like this Mm -hmm. it's gonna go by like this we're gonna be in the same spot if we don't do what we're supposed to do and, and perfect our craft we're going to be in the same spot in a year from now mm-hmm. and that's really all I could tell them um in that moment but it really happened like super fast 
Yes. Like so, literally three days. That's crazy. <laughs> that's yeah. crazy. How, how has it kind of been ramping back? I know you, like you've been over there. How long, how, how long have you been over there now? Is it? Uh, what's today? It is Seven? April I've been, 7th. Yeah. I think it's like, I've been for here for like 38 days. Okay. How, how's, how's it been kind of ramping up and, and practicing and everything like that? How's that gone? Um, you know, the first couple of days, like in, in the first game I played in, because I think I practiced twice and then we had a game. Mm-hmm. So of course that first game, I'm like, <laughs> right, <laughs> right. You know, like, <laughs> uh, like, get me out of here. <laughs> yeah. Played 27 minutes in the first game, Man. 27 minutes. Man. 27 minutes. <laughs> Crazy. So, um, the first week or two was difficult, like breathing wise like getting back in that type of shape my wind Mm -hmm. was jacked up um but I'll say it took me really about three three and a half four weeks to really be able to just go and practice and try to like sprint hard every single time Mm because I had a sprint sprint like full-blown sprint in almost two years like seriously like take off trying to get like an open layup it's it had been so long so for me to get to that point, it really took me like three to four weeks to, mm-hmm. to start really feeling comfortable playing again mm-hmm. and like beating up on people. Right. It's so a lot. One thing, <laughs> one thing that I, I find really interesting is obviously women's basketball players just in general, so many go overseas just because mm-hmm. like limited, especially like in the, in the WNBA, there's just so many limited roster spots and mm-hmm. like the expansion is kind of inevitable. But this season we've seen, I think it's over 100 players declare for the WNBA draft. Mm-hmm. And there's only 32 draft picks somewhere, somewhere in that range. There's going to be a I lot of players. Yeah. And it's, so, it's somewhere in there. So what would be your message for players and like kind of like previewing what overseas basketball is like for players that are coming from the States that oh, aren't man. in the WNBA? Oh man. Oh man. That's, I mean, that's a, that's a good one because it's like even overseas, yeah, there are a lot of spots, there's a lot of space, but it's not for everybody. Mm-hmm. You're away from home. You're in a di- completely different culture. You're around people that don't speak your language. You know what I mean? If you're used to a certain type of coach, nine times out of 10, you're going to come over here and it's going to be completely different. If you go to some lower leagues, the coach is not going to know what they're talking about. And you're going to be frustrated because you're like, I thought I knew basketball. And then you go to a certain team and it's like, I don't know basketball. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I don't know really what's going on. So I would say, first of all, if you can go, go. See if you like it. See if you, if you enjoy it. Some people like to be, you know, immersed into new cultures and get to travel for way cheaper and get to see new things, taste new food, meet new people. Some people like that. But you won't know for sure until you try it. If you have the opportunity, I say 100% take it. Um, but you'll know quickly if it's for you or not if you like it or not you'll know it, it, it'll be within probably a month that you know mm-hmm. and the conditional in some places over here is a lot different than at home it's a lot different mm-hmm. a lot what different. do you what do you think has been like in, in your experience playing overseas the biggest like culture shock like, like it doesn't have to be basketball related just kind of in general what was the biggest thing when you went overseas and we're just like what is going on over here well first of all I went to Spain, okay? And maybe it's like the Oklahoma girl in me or something. Like never been out of the country. That was my first time out of the country. I'm mm-hmm. thinking Spanish people are like, you know, you know, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Don't make me say it. Don't make me say it. But no, they're very much European. Mm-hmm. Very much white. Mm-hmm. Very yeah. much white. Right. And I was so shocked and I was like, wait where am I (laughs) you know (laughs) where where am I you know but they just they're like they're white and they have you know the dark hair Mm -hmm. you know what I mean Mm -hmm. so uh, that was my first shock and I was like I thought they were supposed to be like you know mamacitas and and puppies you know like stuff like that obviously my 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 mindset and 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 thought process has changed especially Mm -hmm. when you go new places keep an open mind anywhere you go because Mm -hmm. you never know what you're going to see you never know Mm -hmm. who you're going to meet um and also it's just like because I'm very like out there like I talk with my hands I'm like hee hee ha ha bubbly most of the time and I'm a jokester 
So I've, I've had instances where the coaches don't like that. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I've had instances where the coaches are like, why are you like this? Why are you, nah, you're too like cocky. Like, like mm -hmm. they see it as cocky. They see it as like arrogant, like arrogant American. Oh. But I'm just like, now if I came in here and didn't talk to anybody and didn't smile mm -hmm. and didn't hit your hand and wasn't a good teammate and wasn't communicating and wasn't hanging out with my teammates, you guys would be like, what's her problem? Why is she, right. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I could literally write a book on the amount of times that I've been basically literally picked on mm -hmm. for how I am, mm -hmm. for knowing basketball. That's another thing for knowing basketball, knowing how to play basketball the right way. And then I'm, I'm met with people that are insecure with their basketball knowledge. Mm -hmm. And then the, all of a sudden that's my problem, but I'm just like, I know how to play basketball. I know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I would obviously I'm not going to be like you don't know what you're talking about right never in my life never right. in my life to do that but maybe I am cocky on the basketball court maybe I am but you're supposed to be right. I, I'm not a you know shy little oh well I hope I can play against you guys no I'm gonna beat your butt mm -hmm. sorry I don't know if you can guess on this nah, I mean you can do whatever you but, want it's, it's my podcast but, you can do whatever we want <laughs> but I'm gonna beat your butt and I'm not gonna hold back because that's what I'm here for. I'm paid to do this. Right. I'm paid to come over here. And I'm trying to continue to level up my, mm -hmm. you know, my surroundings. So that's probably the biggest thing. Keep an open mind anywhere you go. Yeah. Okay. So with you returning to the court, that means all three Bruners are playing <laughs> high level basketball right now. Yeah. Obviously you're in France. Jordan's mm -hmm. in Portugal. Tommy's in Jacksonville playing D1 basketball. Mm -hmm. What does that, obviously, family, I mean, I've been around your family since, I think Tommy was in second, I think he was in, he was in third grade, I was in second grade. Mm -hmm. So I know how important family is to you guys and how mm -hmm. tight-knit y'all are. How, how cool is that for you to be able to see, I mean, to have all three of you playing yeah. at the same time? Well, I mean, it, it's cool now. Like I've had that year, you know, when Jordan transferred to Alabama mm -hmm. and he was five hours away from us in South Carolina. And again, mm -hmm. I was retired. So anytime he had a game, anytime he was, you know, Georgia, um, what's the other one? I think we went to Tennessee. Mm -hmm. um, we went to drums to Nashville. Any, any home game at Alabama, we were there. So mm -hmm. the fact that I got to see him like live, because at, when he was at Yale, I think I saw one, one game right in four in four years mm -hmm. I only saw one game so the fact that I could go and like basically be like his fangirl mm -hmm. was like the best experience for me the best experience for me because I missed I had missed so much and I was just like I would drop everything anything and everything to just go to his game and just come back the, ne the very next day mm -hmm. um Tommy obviously he was close to home right he was closer to home so I got to see more of his games um and then I think it was the COVID year. I got to see a lot of his games. And then this past season, I got to see a lot of his games as well because he was four hours away mm -hmm. at Jacksonville. Um, but it, it, it's amazing for me because I'm like, I feel like I was the blueprint. And they'll tell you this. Mm -hmm. I feel like I was the blueprint because I did everything the right way, you know? Mm -hmm. um, went to that, that school that nobody was really talking about, but it was D1. It was in the SEC's Power Five. Um, and helped build it into what it is now. Jordan was kind of the same way at Yale. Obviously, mm -hmm. Yale was a little more prestigious in, in the basketball world because they were winning mm -hmm. in the Ivy League conference. Um, and he went and built and then went to Alabama and they went on a tear mm -hmm. the entire year, killing people. One, what, two rings? Three rings, really, technically. SEC was... normal or SEC champs yep. and the SEC mm -hmm. tournament champs in the Sweet 16. Yeah. Is that three so. rings, technically? I, think so. I, I guess so, yeah. I mean, definitely, for sure, the, the SEC rings. And then, I mean, yeah. I count, and Sweet 16 is an accomplishment of its own right, if it's not a ring. like. Well, we got Sweet 16 rings, so I'm going to assume it. Oh, then that's a ring. Then I'm counting that a ring. <laughs> that's a ring. That's <laughs> three. Say, I assume everybody yeah, does. Yeah, that's three. But, um, and then Tommy, of course, going to um, Upstate and scoring, what did he have, like 480 points yeah. his freshman year? Mm -hmm. um, and he was all AP All-American mid-major or something yeah, like that? Yeah, I think it was freshman just, team. Mm -hmm. Something like that. So, I mean, for them to continue to, like, kick my butt in everything that I've done, I feel like I'm just, I'm, like, super proud because, I mm -hmm. mean, Yale, wow. And then Bama, he goes and kills. And then George, Tommy is is, you know setting records for points as a freshman mm -hmm. which is 
I can't complain. I, yeah. There's literally nothing I could say. Like, it was not like, oh yeah, I'm the best. I mean, <laughs> I would never say I'm not the best. I would right. never say I'm not the best, but they got me beat a little bit. Yeah, just that's bit. okay. But, but you were the blueprint. You did it first. I'm the blueprint. So, like, right. so they, don't, they don't get there if you don't set the blueprint. So you'll always have that. You always have that. Jordan would probably be like, what do other tall people do? Swimming or something? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, he, hide in or something. He'd be, he'd be tall for no reason. Yeah, he'd be one of those. <laughs> yep. But okay, to wrap this up, one last question. All time South Carolina starting five. Who is it, who is it going to be for you? One last question to end it off right. I know it's a tough one. I didn't prepare you for this one. Oh. but all-time starting five at the University of South Carolina. Can I put myself in it? I you don't can, feel right if I don't can, put myself you, in it. Of course. I mean, you can put yourself in it. It's, it's your starting five. <sighs> let me start. Let me start. Let me start. Dang, that's hard. Okay, I'm not going to put myself in it because that's selfish. That's main it's, character syndrome. Okay. It's up to you. It's your starting five. It's whatever you want to do. No, it's tough. That's really, it's tough. There's really been a lot of good South Carolina players. Okay, I'm gonna go backwards because I got to think about my point guard. Because okay, okay. Leah Boston. Right. Obviously. Asia Wilson does. She has a freaking statue. She has a whole statue. You can't really. She has a whole statue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is so hard. I want to say Alicia Gray. Because she was a beast. Mm -hmm. She was a beast the year. What year was it? 2017. Yep. That year that they that they won. Mm -hmm. She she was playing the four. Mm -hmm. She was killing people. I'm gonna go with her. Two at the two. Okay, we well, we just gonna have to do position this basketball. <laughs> I mean it's modern. Oh. Mm. That's tough. Yeah, Boston at the five. Wilson at the four, Gray at the mm -hmm. three. Mm -hmm. Now you just got to fill those guard spots. <sighs> Henny was Henny was killer. killer though. Henny on, was on, killer. On the defensive side, too. On both sides. That's Everyone what was people don't give people credit for. Mm -hmm. That's what's frustrating. Let's mm -hmm. go back to the Clark thing. Because she <laughs> Let's plays. Let's just run it back. She plays, what, 38 minutes? Mm -hmm. Let's assume 38 minutes. But the defense isn't as high level as the Carolina girls' defense. Like we're having to score, Henny's having to score 24 points and then go guard Paige mm -hmm. at the other end. Mm -hmm. Not the same. Anyway, <laughs> just let's go back. Oh, <laughs> so hard. Okay, I'm gonna go with Henny. I'm gonna go with Henny. Okay, is she your point? She's the freshest in my mind. Yes, okay. let's go with her. At the point. Okay, so you, now you just need your two guard. It's positionless, remember? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I want to go with Tiffany Mitchell because numbers and mm -hmm. because she killed. Mm -hmm. But I feel like Zaya is going to be the next best. Like, I feel like her senior year, she's going to murder everybody. Mm. I feel like that. But I can't go off of what I feel for the future. Mm. That's fair. You, you got it. You got I'm it. glad you pointed that out. Yeah, good job. Good job. Good point. Good point. <laughs> Uh, I do agree though. I think she I think she's about to pop off. Yeah. I think this is about to be a crazy season for her. I think she's gonna go bananas. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna just go with team team Mitch. I'm gonna go with Tiffany Mitchell. There you go. That's a that's a that's a national championship team right there. That's like a double that's, that's, I mean that's that's a dynasty if I've ever seen one. They'd win some games in the WNBA, that's for sure. Oh yeah, oh a hundred percent. 100%. Well, Ashley, thank you so much for coming on and meant the world to me. The first guest on Art of the Paint had to be had to be the family, of course. Yeah. Couldn't, couldn't do it any other way. Congratulations to your Gamecocks, of course, on winning the national thank championship. You. you know, I feel like mm -hmm. you had a big part of that on the Twitter side. So I, I could tell that you were, you were influencing the team. But thank Absolutely. you so much for coming on. And make sure, if you're watching on YouTube, to subscribe and like. If you're listening on whatever podcast uh, platform that you are watching on, subscribe on that, rate it, and we'll see you next week.